And a God-called, spirit-filled man of God, he's going to obey this book and do what the Bible says he's going to reprove, rebuke, and exhort you. If he's a man of God, he's going to do these things because he wants you to do the will of God, and he wants you to quit being a carnal, weak, Laodicean Christian. He wants you to step out of that nonsense and quit being some, some run-of-the-mill average Christian, and he wants you to rise above that and start living the Christian life as God intended. If he's a man of God, that's why he says the things that he says. All right, guys. Well, that was our first segment there. We're going to talk about the limits of love. Love has limits. Wait a minute. What in the world are you talking about? I thought love was this boundless, no boundary thing. Well, truth is it has limits. And um, we're going to get into several verses here. We're going to talk about love and its limits. We we have uh, we read John three sixteen a little while ago about how God's love just seems it. God loves everybody, sure, uh, but there are conditions, there are boundaries, and there are limits, if you will, to love. And so I want to talk about this now, uh, brother Johnny. Have you ever been to a wedding where they read First uh, Corinthians thirteen about charity and how it suffereth long and all that kind of stuff right there? I've seen that a lot, like on a lot of um, like wedding invitations and stuff like that. Which, speaking of which, my brother is actually getting married in September, so that's that's pretty cool. And uh, so we're you know everybody's doing weddings, and, and a lot of the summertime people are doing a wedding. Uh, it's it's a lot of a lot of fun there. But um, I've seen this passage of scripture used oftentimes talking about charity, and charity is just an, another word for love. Uh, but it says here that uh, charity suffereth long and is kind. Well, we we agree with that. It says, it envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. So that's all good and well. We all believe that. Doth not behave itself unseemly, uh, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Now, lots of times people will uh, will skip verse number six and go right into verse number seven. It says, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. That sounds like a Joel Osteen sermon, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Endureth our th- all things. Oh, I love charity. Charity never faileth. But where whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And so, I mean, you know, that's what people do. They like to skip verse number six. But here's the thing about love. Love has a limit, Mm -hmm. and that the Bible says that charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, but it rejoiceth in the truth. Oh, boy. I love it when the Bible drops bombs on heresy, you know. Charity rejoiceth not in iniquity, in the affirming of sin. It doesn't like that. It rejoiceth in the what, Brother Johnny? says, rejoiceth in the truth. God bless you, Brother Johnny. Welcome to the live stream yes. tonight. Amen. <laughs> you guys got a task here, and, and I'm uh, on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But uh, it, says, it says, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Um, you, you know, I, I want to just say, um, you know, A, rejoicing in the truth is a sign of love. Mm-hmm. Now, people who rejoice in error and embrace error in the name of love, they're not loving. They're, they're liars. They're not loving. These people are haters. And that's what we said in one of the third out of three trailers. These people are haters who do not love the truth. They are haters. Now, here's one thing I want to say to everybody, and I, I want you to really hear me, and this is my heart for you tonight. The modern evangelical church has made an idol of certain attributes of God without worshiping God himself. Does that make sense, Brother Johnny? Mm-hmm. Is that pretty? I mean, I want to make sure I'm making sense. I need to bounce things off of you so that I'm clear. The modern church has made an idol of certain attributes of God, kind of like a buffet. They're just picking and choosing what they want of God, and they're not really even worshiping God Himself. They're worshiping the attributes of God. I believe this too, and even A.W. Tozer said this. He said, "You can worship worship." I think you can do that. Brother Johnny, yeah. and that song, The Blessing, that Carrie Job and Furtick and all those people did over there at Elevation Worship, uh, those people, they, they, I think they make an idol of worship. They worship worship. But one of the things I think they're doing is not only are they, are they making an idol of worship, they're making an idol of love. And they're, they're not only worshiping worship, but they're loving love mm. without that being somehow attached to God. And the only way that can be attached to God is to attach it to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. So love has to be attached to truth for it to be biblical love. 
And I think we can prove that pretty conclusively with 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6, that charity, love, pure love, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. And that's something that when we talk about the limits of love, we have to realize that love does have limits. And so, Brother Johnny, you've got some verses on love there for us. What is a what is a good verse that you have ready for us to go right there? What which one you got? So definitely the first one I'd uh, I'd like to go to here is going to be uh, it's going to be let me bring it up here. My goodness, Brother Johnny, I'm praying for you. Oh man, I've got so many here. I've done uh, I've done lots. There's First John, I think it was here. Okay, First John yeah. chapter two is I that think what? Two, yes. Okay, yeah, there it is. All right, First John two is verse fifteen or so. Yes, yep, right. two fifteen. What does that say, brother Johnny? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Ooh, boy, brother, brother Johnny, you sound like a legalist now. Mm. It says, "Love not." That sounds like a like love has a limit. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It sounds like to me, Brother Johnny, that uh, if a man loves the world, doesn't love the Lord. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's fair to say. What do you think? Oh, yeah. And uh, if a man loves the world, then he doesn't really love the Lord. And uh, that's something that you can't, that the average evangelical today cannot stomach that kind of stuff. That love would have limits. And uh, I hear a lot of people today talk about the unconditional love of God, and, and quite frankly, I, I think that's I think I know what some people think that means, but I don't. I think that's kind of code for heresy today, mm-hmm. meaning that you can do anything you want, you can say anything you want, you can act anything you want. God just loves you, loves you, loves you, and God does love His people. Kind of like if if one of my children were to act ugly and do something heinous, I would still love them, but uh, there would still be some consequences to that. You know what I mean? Like you can lose your fellowship, you can you can actually destroy relationships uh, by sin and stuff like that. But but the positionally you can you can't change that and that's what you know it's eternal security people that's what we try to explain to folks but oftentimes it falls on deaf ears uh, but yeah I mean love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him so you got another one for us brother Johnny I think just going off of that one you've got uh, ones like uh, Matthew five forty four mm-hmm. uh, where we get we get away from. Okay, here, here we just need to love everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and talks about here uh, in five forty four. Uh, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Uh, mm-hmm. Which kind of goes along with Matthew nineteen nineteen. It says, "Honor thy father and mother; thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself." Right. I think we take that and we go just love everything about the person. Sure, we sure. Love their sin. Love yeah. everything. Yeah. And we don't take the verse we just talked about in First John. Sure, sure. Well, you know, okay. Like I love sinners. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people out there that are in terrible sin, and I love those people, but that doesn't mean that I I, I affirm their sin. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I say that their sin is okay. You know, have you ever seen that show, My 600-Pound Life? (laughs) You ever seen that show before? Yeah. I watched one episode, and it was like like there's some things in there that are comical, um, you know. Like there's some Indian doctor in there, and he told a woman, he said, "Trust me, you're not going to starve to death." You know, <laughs> he said, "You're okay." Yeah. I was just okay, just comical stuff like that. Uh, but there was one episode where there was this kid, and he was 15, mm. and he was every bit of 700 pounds. Wow. Okay, <laughs> I mean gigantic, and he didn't even leave the house. He couldn't even walk through the doors. He was so big, um, and I, like. I was sitting there thinking, this kid's 15. Mm-hmm. How did he do this? I mean, he <laughs> he's just getting started, you yeah. know? I mean, like, you, he packed on a lot of weight really quick, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and I got to watching, I said, let's just figure this out. And what, what it was was his mom was an enabler to him, oh, yeah. okay? His mother was sitting there, I mean, talking about industrial size, um, Costco size, Sam's Club size, <laughs> of cans of like sloppy Joe, you know, sandwich barbecue meat. She was cooking two of those at a time and, and like putting them all on burgers for him and going in there with like, like something that would like, like the amount of food that a Baptist church potluck would eat. (laughs) She was doing that for him four times a day. Yeah. And that's what he was doing. Like, and he was just, he was like, mom, I'm still hungry. Mom, you know, like, and she was enabling him. Okay. And she says, well, I, and, and, and it, it was so unbelievable. She got on that TV and she says, well, I just love my son and I just want him to be happy. Yeah. That's what she was doing. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, lady, your, your definition of love is so warped. If you loved your son, you'd let him starve for a little while. 
he is doing just fine. He's got a lot of stored up credit he can live off of, okay? <laughs> I mean, this guy is not lacking in the calorie department, okay? If you loved your son, you would you would not feed him like that, and you would not enable him in his sin like that, and you would make him go outside and walk for a little while, okay? Mm-hmm. But that's what evangelicalism is doing in a lot of ways. I, I, I feel we are saying we love these people, and we're confirming them in their sin. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you right now, um, there's a lot of people out there that are they're trying to figure out what do you do? What do you do with all these these new minorities that just came, you know, I mean like there's all these new demographics of people and and you know the L there's the L, there's a T, there's a B, there's a whatever, and they're adding all kinds of stuff to that at the all the way through, okay? Um and the church is trying to figure out what do we do with these people? What do we do with them? And a lot of people are saying, well, we just need to embrace them and love them as is. And, and you know, like, I'm not, I'm not on a crusade to try to, you know, do anything unkind or anything to anybody, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not on a crusade like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, just, I just, from my studies of the Bible, I believe it to be sin, and I'm not going to tell these people that it's okay. All right. Well, I'm we, just not going to. We've got people in our church that got tattoos. Mm-hmm. They got piercings, and I, yeah. I ain't talking about just like a tattoo on their arm. They got on everywhere. Yeah. Okay? And we don't have to sit there and tell them. We don't, we don't ever sit there and, and go, what do you got those for? You're wicked. He's sure. Da, da, da. No, we, we, we love them, and we let the Bible do the work on them. We let Jesus yeah. do the work on them. We, yeah, sure. gotta, we don't have to tell them it's wrong. You know, uh, just like Brother, Brother Adam's testimony, we talked with him. Mm-hmm. You know it's wrong after you get saved. Like, you yeah. just, you know, you may not know it immediately, but through reading, through teaching, you go, yeah. I guess well, it's not right. Yeah, yeah, this is not right. My first uh, Sunday showing up at Peachtree Road Baptist Church in Swanee, Georgia, I, pl- I, I pulled up Blair and Tool. <laughs> and I parked next to the sweetest little old lady in that church, yeah. right next to her. And uh, she thought Satan had rolled up. <laughs> and, uh, and it was funny looking back on it now. I thought, like, she looked down in that car at me and looked in that window and she goes, <laughs> oh, and just walked in the church, and her name was uh, Sister Francis. Francis Bias was her name, mm-hmm. and uh, she thought that she thought Lord Lucifer had showed up <laughs> at that church. Uh, but I just I just gotten saved on Monday, and that was Sunday. So I, I guess what is that six seven days yeah. of six days of being saved? I didn't know. I mean, whatever. Okay, <laughs> and um, so they but they didn't say a word to me. They're no. patient with no. me, love me, you love them, but you're not loving their sin. You're not going, hey man, yeah, it's awesome sure. tattoo. You know, you yeah. know, we're not doing that. No, no, they we're didn't come up to me and that. say, hey. That tool CD was, yeah, awesome. was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you know they didn't do that to me. Right. They, you know, I, and got I got to where uh, after a couple months being there, I got curious. Mm-hmm. I said, "Hey, uh, what do you think of this?" And they'd be like, "Yeah, you don't want to listen to that." Right. I say, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that that verse, "Turn you at my reproof." Yeah. I started doing that. I started listening mm-hmm. to people, and uh, and there's a lot of times they told me things that were hard to take. Mm-hmm. They're hard to take, like you know, um, like you know, the, I was actually I was at a hardcore church. They they believe going to movie theater was a sin. <laughs> I mean, and so, and I, I, you know, whatever. I, I quit going. Yeah. Okay, I ain't been to a movie theater forever, and but I don't. I'm not saying that like in a fair sequel way, like I'm better than you or whatever. But, uh, but they were against everything, <laughs> and uh, and and I, you know, I wanted that because I wanted to be distant from the world that was sending me to hell. Yeah. You know, I wanted to be as far away from that as I could. And uh, but they, they were separated people. But lot, but man, as separated as they were, and as hardcore as they were, they often they uh, they unless I asked, they didn't say nothing to me. All right. You know. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I thank God for that because I think that's the right way to handle that. Mm-hmm. But there's a difference between between preaching what the book says and then hopscotching through the Bible so that you don't try to yeah. offend people. Right, and that's what. It, well, that, that's the other side of the coin is our pastor doesn't doesn't skip verses because people are in the audience. Sure, or in the sure. congregation, he doesn't <laughs> skip verses. He he preaches it and let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. And, and yeah, absolutely. Well, and okay, let's let's just use six hundred pound life as a great example. Okay, you need to go watch that. This fun. There's I've seen us. that I'm Indian like, doctor in I there. Watched it. I gotta go to the gym, guys. Oh man, I go to the gym. Hey, if my house ever gets dirty, <laughs> I, I go watch Hoarders. Yeah. And then if I ever I get to where it. I'm kind of lacking motivation, I, I watch that show. I like. I gotta get on a treadmill <laughs> right now. And uh, so, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started, but you give me in trouble. But um, but uh, I don't forget what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but okay, that doctor. Okay, that man's gone to medical school. He's helped these people for years and years and years. And sometimes he says some things to those people that is pretty tough. Mm-hmm. But it, it, I don't think he wakes up every morning and says, "What can I do to offend a fat woman today?" <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think he does that. I think he gets up and says, "What can I do to uh, to help these help. people?" And sometimes, in order to get help, you have to say things to people that are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. 
And in order to grow in the Lord, sometimes you have to hear things that are uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I just don't think we want to do that today. I don't no. think most Christians, you know, I was telling you the other, uh, I think it was last week, uh, I think it was Bob Jones Sr. that said most of us could not take the preaching that it would take to get us right with God where we need mm-hmm. to be. Most of us could not take it uh, because lots of us are just so convinced that we're, we are where we should be with God and we're good in good shape. And um, I mean, you know, I, I look at this verse here, Brother Johnny, let me just show you this, okay? Uh, it says there that 2 Timothy, this is Paul's last words to, to, uh, to Timothy here. Okay, he talks. He talks about uh, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. In verse number two, he says, "Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season." So there's two times a preacher ought to preach. You ought to preach in season. You ought to preach out of season, which mm-hmm. covers everything. Okay, um, and it, then it says this. Okay, there's three words here in this verse: reprove, rebuke, exhort. Mm-hmm. Reproving is saying, "Hey, you ought not do this." Rebuking is saying, you dirty animal, you ought not do this. Exhorting is saying, God has a plan for you, wonderful, amen, let's go do this. That's that's the difference, okay? Two-thirds of that is negative. Mm-hmm. Two-thirds of that is kind of personal, <laughs> <laughs> telling you that yeah. uh, you should not be doing this kind of stuff. And uh, folks, I'm going to tell you right now that most churches don't want that. We don't want that because we think that's unloving. Mm-hmm. He said something about my daughter. Yeah, who's he? Who's he to say something? Who's he to say that I can't be eating forty pounds of sloppy Joe every day? <laughs> He's a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean this isn't rocket science, is it? He's a doctor. He knows what he's talking about. You probably should not be eating one hundred and twenty pounds of sloppy Joe every week. Okay, <laughs> um, okay. Who's this preacher to say that I shouldn't be doing out there, you know, beer drinking with my sister friends on and the honky tonk on Friday night before I come to church on Sunday morning and saying I can't teach Sunday school because I'm out there in my honky tonk on on Friday night? I mean, I I go Friday instead of Saturday so I have enough time to sober up before I come teach the five year olds (laughs) in Sunday school class on Sunday morning at my church. Okay, who's this preacher? He's God's man for that local assembly. Mm-hmm. And he's charged before God to preach the word. And if that word uh, goes against your sin, then so be it. Mm-hmm. I like what Billy Sunday said years ago. Um, he said that uh, someone went up to him and said, Brother Sunday, you preaching all this hard stuff. You are rubbing the cat the wrong way. And Billy Sunday was a really witty guy. He says, well, if I'm rubbing the cat the wrong way, then just turn the cat around and everything will be fine. <laughs> and uh, that's what we don't want to do. We don't want, to, we don't want this book correcting us. We want this mm-hmm. book to confirm us in our sin, and it never will. God is not playing games with our sin. He's not playing games with my sin. He's not playing games with your sin. And that book will not change for you. There are no exceptions for you. And, uh, and Brother Johnny, what I just said is so unloving to the average person, mm-hmm. but love has limits. Yeah, Love has boundaries. What yeah. were you saying? Well, we got to get out of this mindset of being offended on everything. Yeah. It's, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've been, you know, I've done it at work before. Well, why is he telling me this? I, I feel like I did it right. Yeah. And I look back and I'm like, no, I didn't. He was mm. right. <laughs> yeah. He was right. Your divine feminine is uh, rising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, same thing with, with somebody you know, trying to help you or whatever. They're they're trying to help you. Yeah. And they may come across completely wrong. They may come across mean, angry, whatever, yeah. hateful, yeah. but they're ultimately trying to help you. Yes. Well, yeah, Brother Johnny, I, you know, you played sports. You you were a pitcher. I was a uh, strong tackle on the football team. <laughs> uh, different skill set altogether, trust yes. me. Um, I, brother, I, for some reason, I cannot throw a baseball. Yeah. I mean, well, I, can bench, I can bench press 400 pounds, <laughs> but I can't throw a ball oh, 55 yeah. miles an hour. I, it's the weirdest thing. It has been the enigma <laughs> of my sports life. Yeah. I, I, and I've gone to, I've gone to the, like the science museum, you know, where they yeah. have that thing where you clock it. And I've gone to every state fair. And it was, I mean, I can throw it. I can throw it so hard that I think my, my wrist broke and it's like 54 miles an hour. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, no. I feel like a total Pee Wee Herman nincompoop. Okay. I'm telling you, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't throw a baseball. Mm-hmm. I just can't, but you could, I can't. Um, but where was I going with this brother, Johnny? Oh, anyway, but, but coaches in sports yeah. will come to you and say to me, especially say some very difficult things to hear. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. And and they my, my coaches were all former military guys and they oh there were many times I was sitting there in a, in a stance in a in a football scrimmage uh with my mouthpiece in and my helmet on ready to hit somebody and I had tears coming out of my eyes cuz I was weeping mm-hmm. cuz that preacher had just tore my head off or that that coach had just tore my <laughs> head off. And uh but you know what I responded to that and I said okay that I won't be doing that no more and I got to be a better football player because men were were hard on me and would not let me be a loser. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I don't know, brother Johnny. Have you had experiences like that oh, where coaches yeah, were rough definitely. on you? Definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just part of it. And, and and a coach is not doing that because he hates you, although mm-hmm. we thought they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We thought they hated us, but they weren't doing that because they hated us. They were doing that because they wanted us to be winners. Mm-hmm. And I can appreciate that. I really can. And uh, I actually read a book on um, on uh, the the famous Alabama coach before Nick Saban. Um, what was his I'm name? Sure. What was his name? I forget. Anyway, he had the he had the hat. Um, I forget his name. It's, it escapes me here on the live stream. Uh, but somebody said in the comments section. Um, but they said that that man that man was such a master at reading people, and that they that he knew that there were some men that he could rebuke, and there were some men that he could just put his hand on their shoulder and say, "I love you. I'm for you. I think you can do this. I believe in you." And he knew what caused men to respond. Bear Bryant, that was Bear his Bryant. name. Bear Bryant. Found, yeah. They said Bear Bryant was a master. He wasn't a great football coach, but they said he was a master at teaching and 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 finding a way for young men to respond. And he said some men needed to have their face ripped off. Some men just needed a pat on the back. He was a master at reading people. And uh, there was one time he had All-American linebacker, senior year, come in there, okay? Uh, second day of practice, on you know, in in the summer before everybody starts playing, this guy is going to go to the NFL, okay? he's, a, he's He is a five-star All-American linebacker. And he, he went out there and watched practice and realized, he said, my five-star All-American linebacker is, is slacking on me. He went out there in front of everybody and fired him. <laughs> Kicked him off the team. Oh, boy. Okay, this guy's like, I'm, I'm talking about like, like this is Tom Brady <laughs> of, the, of the defense. Kicked him off the team mm. and said, I'm going to see what he does. Next day, the guy showed up with his pads on, stood on the sideline. And, and, and he let him stand there for a week <laughs> and didn't, didn't even put him in a play, okay? Yeah. And then he went to him and said, are you, are you done being a big sissy wimp? And the guy said, yes, sir, coach, I am. He said, okay, get back in there. And, and, and that guy had a, like, like he had the best season that year. Mm-hmm. And it's because he, did, he didn't kick him off the team because he, he didn't kick him off the team because he hated him because he had an ax to grind or because he was racist or nothing like that. Okay. He did it because he didn't want that guy to be a loser. Mm-hmm. He knew there was better for him in there. And a God-called, spirit-filled man of God, he's going to obey this book and do what the Bible says he's going to reprove, rebuke, and exhort you. If he's a man of God, he's going to do these things because he wants you to do the will of God, and he wants you to quit being a carnal, weak, Laodicean Christian. He wants you to step out of that nonsense and quit being some some run-of-the-mill average Christian. And he wants you to rise above that and start living the Christian life as God intended. If he's a man of God, that's why he says the things that he says. And uh, I've read the diary of David Brainerd many times, many times. And it, I love, that is probably the, one of the most uplifting things I have ever read in my life outside of the Bible is the diary of David Brainerd. David Brainerd was dying of tuberculosis. He was laying on his back and he was coughing up blood. And he wrote, he wrote one final letter to his, to his earthly brother. And he told his earthly brother somewhere in that conversation, he says, do not live like the average Christian. That was his last message to his brother. And I thought to myself, what a great message. Mm-hmm. Do not be like the average Christian. It's, I'm talking about like in the 1700s. <laughs> yeah. Okay? It's with TikTok and all this other stuff today, oh, it's yeah. not any better. No. Okay? No, it's not. <laughs> you know, he said, don't live like the average Christian. And I thought to myself, what a message that is. Mm-hmm. Thank God, thank God for preachers like David Brainerd and others who are trying to get us to snap out of our carnality and snap out of our laziness and rebuke us and reprove us and exhort us to do the perfect will of God. That's what love is. Mm-hmm. And so I get up here and say, you know, hey, don't listen to Stephen Furtick because he's crazy. He's nuts. And everybody's like, oh, you, you're just unloving. No, it's not. It's the total <laughs> opposite. I say that because I love you. Yep. And I don't want your kids getting swept away at a bunch of... I, I, somebody sent me, Stephen Furtick's son has a YouTube channel. <laughs> okay? I'm talking about 
demonic things all over that channel. Wow. This guy, all he does is make dope beats, okay? Yeah. And they, they, they tell me it's Stephen Furtick's son. It looks, it looks kind of like him. I don't want my kids like that. No. I don't want your kids like that. I don't want your church like that. I don't, I don't want you getting swept away in this garbage. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that because I'm just some jerk. Yeah. I don't say that because I'm some Steven Anderson sociopathic crazy who just looking for a fight somewhere. I say that because I love this book. Mm -hmm. And I know what this book did for me. And I know what that book can do for you yep. if you listen to it. So, Brother Johnny, love has limits. Mm -hmm. It does. And love says no. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? But the modern evangelical does not understand that and really doesn't. Doesn't really believe that. <laughs> so, you got any more verses over there on love, Brother Johnny Forrest? Uh, I got this last one here, and it kind of goes around with what you were saying earlier about the seasons. Uh, it's Ecclesiastes 3 8. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the seasons. There's everything, there's a season a okay. time to love and a time to hate. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, for everything. There, there is a there is a time for that. There's a time to lift up people, but there's also a time to, to say some straight things to people. Yeah. And guys, when I a lot of time I get on here and I say things, man, that a lot of people think, oh, whoa, you know, there's a time for that. There's a time for that. And so love has limits, and we thank God for that. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to take just a quick break. I want to remind you again, we're giving away 10 items tonight, 10 items tonight, just like this one uh, from our Teespring store. Uh, this one is a poster. I can do all things through a verse out of context. We're going to be giving away 10 of these for everybody. Uh, if you donate tonight in the live chat or through PayPal, then uh, you get entered into a drawing for these things. So uh, no minimum amount. You can donate, you know, a dollar or $10 or whatever you want to donate. That'd be great. But we're going We'll be giving away 10 of these tonight. We've got them pre-packaged. We've got a lot of good things, uh, things from our Teespring store, and uh, you can go enjoy all that. That'll be great. So please prayerfully consider donating to that, and that'll be good. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. We're going to talk about the purity of the church, the purity of the church. God bless you, friend. We'll be right back. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I've got exciting news about our new book, From Football to Faith. It is now available on Amazon.com. All you have to do is click the link below. It'll take you to Amazon's website, and you can get your own copy sent to your front door, and uh, that will be a blessing. Uh, in this book, I gave my testimony of how I came to know Christ as my Savior, and a lot of the character lessons that I learned playing football that are applicable to the Christian life. And you'll find many good stories in here that are funny, some that are sad, some that are uh, inspirational. But I'm sure this book will be a blessing to you. Christians young and old will enjoy this book, and I know that it'll be a blessing to you. So go ahead and get your copy today, and we appreciate you guys. And if you haven't done this already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And look forward to many more good videos together in the future. God bless you, friend. Have a good day.